Good morning. Today, I have the privilege of speaking to you to announce our 2021 National Law Enforcement Action. But I'd like to begin by describing why we have all partnered to investigate and prosecute those who steal from our federal health care programs and those who, through their criminal acts, contribute to the ongoing opioid crisis. In the past year, drug overdoses killed a record number of Americans. Nearly 70,000 died of opioid-related deaths last year. Each one of those deaths stands as a stark reminder of the lives and families and communities ravaged by drug addiction. Behind every loss to addiction are families and friends who mourn and communities that suffer. So it is my privilege to stand shoulder to shoulder here today with my law enforcement partners to announce the latest chapter in our fight against those who profit by pushing this poison into our communities. We are employing every tool at our disposal to address the opioid addiction crisis because I firmly believe that we can and must reach new milestones in the fight against prescription opioid abuse. Make no mistake, the Department of Justice will aggressively prosecute anyone who is illegally peddling opioids for profit. Beyond the immeasurable loss of human life, we estimate that over a billion dollars were fraudulently stolen from our federal health care funds last year. We work tirelessly to protect the public fisc and target those that caused patient harm including healthcare crimes that victimize vulnerable members of our communities, like the elderly and disabled. From August 1 to today, the Criminal Division has coordinated with our colleagues in 28 U.S. Attorney's offices around the country and our agency partners, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Health and Human Services, Office of the Inspector General, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and other various federal and state law enforcement agencies in coordination with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Center for Program Integrity. Together, we have charged more than 135 individuals with schemes involving more than $1.2 billion in alleged health care fraud. These charged defendants also include medical professionals, who issued prescriptions for millions of illicit opioid pills. Our efforts continue the historic and impactful work done recently, particularly in connection with schemes involving telemedicine, COVID-19, sober homes, and opioids. The largest amount of fraud charged in the cases announced today, representing more than $1 billion of alleged fraud, relates to telemedicine, that is the use of telecommunication technology like the phone or video to provide healthcare services remotely rather than in person. For example, in a superseding indictment returned last month in the District of New Jersey, the charges include allegations that the defendants used telemedicine to submit over $784 million of false and fraudulent bills for durable medical equipment to Medicare. The ability to provide health care remotely is a critical tool in the delivery of health care services. And it is the reason that the Department of Justice remains committed to ensuring that the adoption of this new technology is not tainted by wrongdoers. The Fraud Section's Health Care Fraud Unit, including Unit Chief Alan Medina, Kelby McFadden, and Jacob Foster, in partnership with the U.S. Attorney's offices, has been at the forefront of prosecuting the most innovative and impactful telemedicine cases. And these prosecutions have preserved the Medicare Trust Fund for needed care. The 2019 telemedicine and DME tech takedown, for example, that saved Medicare over $1.5 billion as a result of the deterrent message sent by the prosecutions 
and the resulting decline in claims submitted for unnecessary durable medical equipment. The cases announced today also involve healthcare fraud schemes that exploit the ongoing COVID-19 national health emergency. In May of 2021, the department announced a historic nationwide action against COVID-19 healthcare fraud. And just a few short months later, we are now announcing another round of prosecutions, including charges against five additional defendants who defrauded the Provider Relief Fund, a fund that Congress created as part of the CARES Act to provide needed money to healthcare providers on the front lines of the pandemic. These five defendants, like the defendants who were charged in previous cases with similar misconduct, are alleged to have misappropriated provider relief fund monies despite not having any operational medical practice and to have used these funds for their own personal purposes instead of for medical care. Now in September of 2021, we announced the Sober Homes Initiative, the first coordinated enforcement action in DOJ history focused on fraud schemes in the substance abuse treatment industry. The initiative was announced alongside the creation of the National Rapid Response Strike Force, a team that was stood up to address the new and significant multi-district fraud schemes wherever they occur. The National Rapid Response Strike Force led and coordinated the telemedicine and COVID-19 cases announced today, and in partnership with the Healthcare Fraud Unit's Los Angeles Strike Force and with the participation of the U.S. Attorney's Offices for the Central District of California and the Southern District of Florida, continues to use the authority granted by the Eliminating Kickbacks and Recovery Act, as well as other statutes, to prosecute schemes that feed those patients' addiction in order to continue billing for their services. We also are announcing cases today that are part of our ongoing efforts to combat prescription opioid abuse. These cases are only the latest efforts in the department's ongoing response to the nation's opioid epidemic. And they follow the Criminal Division's 2018 creation with our U.S. Attorney's Offices and our law enforcement partners of the Appalachian Regional Prescription Opioid Strike Force. The Strike Force has made significant strides in prosecuting medical professionals who continue to fuel the opioid epidemic in the hardest hit region of the country. This enforcement action is just the latest example of our innovative, comprehensive, and ongoing work in this critical area. Now, these are just a few examples of the types of cases we are announcing today as part of this national enforcement action. It is, of course, important to remember that the charges I've referred to today are merely allegations against these defendants. The defendants are presumed innocent until they are found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. In addition to our criminal prosecutions, today's announcement also demonstrates the results of interagency cooperation and the use of all available tools to combat healthcare fraud. Significantly, and to give but one example, today the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Center for Program Integrity, announced more than 20 billing payment suspensions. These actions will ensure that further taxpayer funds are not wasted and that medical providers who abuse the trust placed in them by the public are precluded from further taking advantage of those in medical need. I also want to mention the challenges of organizing a law enforcement operation of this size during the continued COVID-19 pandemic. Our prosecutors and law enforcement partners face both professional and personal challenges in identifying, investigating, and prosecuting these cases. But I am proud to say that the department and its law enforcement partners are facing and overcoming the challenges 
presented by the ongoing pandemic and continuing to protect the public. Our painful reality is that drug overdose deaths increased by nearly 30% last year, resulting in over 90,000 lives lost to drug overdoses. By removing illegal prescribers and distributors from the system, we are working to prevent the next generation of Americans who suffer from opioid addiction. Working in collaboration across the whole of government, we are stopping corrupt medical professionals in their tracks, providing prevention and treatment services to those in need, and most importantly, working to prevent the next tragic loss in grieving family. Thank you.